and TV and, and be a true talk show host. Can we run this back again? Can we try this again? Can we do it again? Coming to the stage. Shout out to DJ Sparks. Much love. I wish I had rehearsed. Those, those were not my best tattoos. I had better ones than I'm the Hancock. Okay, so um, I've been corresponding with the EOPS program uh, since 2018 to uh, try to come out and speak. I, I didn't reach out earlier because I thought if I come back, I have to have a story, I have to have accomplished something. And so I had to feel like I really had something to share with you guys. And so. In 2018, I reached out, and uh, as you guys know, EOPS organizers, right, you guys have such a huge task every year getting these students through all this because I've been a part of it. Uh, I know there's been some changes in staff over the years, and then we had this little thing called COVID. You guys remember that? When they, like, basically shut down the world. So, you might imagine it took a couple of years for this to happen, and so it's been five years now. And I can cross this one off the bucket list. And I'm very excited. The great Denzel Washington, you guys know the actor Denzel Washington. He said, if you hang around the barbershop long enough, eventually you're gonna get a haircut. Here's my haircut. I made it. So for those of you out there, lesson number one, keep going, okay? It may not be a yes right away, but if you're persistent, and you bug Steven a lot. Not with Steven. I love Steven. Steven's like, this guy have, doesn't he teach? He's always sending me emails. What's, I love him, Steven. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on. When I graduated high school, I had one plan, and that was no plan. There was no meeting or visiting colleges. I didn't want to go to school. Uh, I was basically preoccupied with the prom, dances, and sports. So I didn't have any academic plan. And as you guys know, right, when you don't have a plan, you get stuck. And so right after school was over, I graduated that summer, and I'm looking at all my friends go to different schools, and I'm like, well, what am I gonna do? About halfway through the summer, I start struggling with some depression and sleeping a lot during the day. And then I realized, uh, you know, hey, I need to do something because it's gonna get bad. I'm from a small, non uh, unincorporated community called London. And uh, London back in the day was known as a drug town. And so either you were using drugs or you were selling drugs or you were trying to get out of London. And I needed to get out. So my friend says, hey, I'm going to Cuesta College. And I'm like, where's that? It's like, it's near San Luis Obispo. Do you want to come with me? You can be my roommate, pay some rent. I'm like, do they have a soccer team? <laughs> no. Not, not academics, not what, what do they offer for classes. Do they have a soccer team? And she said, I don't know, we'll find out. So we get the deposit, we go, we set up the apartment, and we go to register at Cuesta College in San Luis Obispo. Right off the bat, I just didn't have that vibe. You know, it was kind of like I felt like a number. Uh, I didn't get to meet with anyone there. And then after registering, of course, not ahead of time, I asked the all-important question that I needed to know about any academic institution. Do you have a soccer team? Uh, Cuesta did not have a soccer team at the time. I've heard they do now, but they didn't have one. And so I told my sister, I said, hey, I'm gonna get in the car and I'm gonna drive down the 101. Now, for the youngins here, uh, we didn't have this thing you guys call Yahoo Maps or GPS or Google Maps. None of that existed at the time. So you just kind of had a map like a pirate and just followed the treasure. So uh, I started driving down the 101 and I said, I'm not gonna stop until I find a school that has a soccer team. I drove past uh, Arroyo Grande, uh, shout out to Napomo, Napomo in the house, right? There you go, Napomo. And uh, eventually I got to this town called Santa Maria that I'd never heard of. Remember, I'm from the Central Valley, country bumpkin. And uh, I exit because I see it says Allen Hancock College. So I pull over and I go to your guys' cafeteria. And I walk in the cafeteria and it's kind of empty and the cafeteria worker's there. And I said, hey, uh, do you know if this school has a soccer team? And she's like, 
you know there's not any school going on today, right? I'm like, there isn't? She's like, no, no, school starts tomorrow. Are you registered? Uh, no, I just found this place. Well, we do have a soccer team. I said, um, do you know how I can get on the soccer team? She goes, well, you have to go to school here. So just to let you guys know how much I know about school. And then the fateful words, the cafeteria uh, worker says, hey, uh, you need to go talk to Eleanor. I go, who's Eleanor? He says, just go to that building right there, walk over there and ask for Eleanor. So I walk over to the next building. At the time, I didn't know it was the EOPS building. And I walk in, I say, um, I'm here to see Eleanor. And they said, do you have an appointment? I said, no. Um, do you have any classes? No. So you're not registered anywhere, no? Yeah, you need to see Eleanor. I go into Eleanor's office and immediately it was the first time since I've been on the Central Coast that I felt just that warmth that comes from love, from somebody who really cares about you and, and, and really wants to see you do well. I was immediately gravitated to Eleanor. She sat me down, she asked the basic questions, right? And then slowly over the next hour, she commenced to plan my life. <laughs> do you know what a bog rat is? No. Uh, do you know what a book voucher is? No. Have you registered for classes? No. Um, do you know what you want to do with your future? Play soccer. Okay. Um, can you guys get the soccer coach's phone number four? We're going to get this boy set up. And within the next hour, I was registered for classes. I had a book voucher. But more importantly, I had hope. Eleanor gave me hope. EOPS is all about providing hope. Can we all agree with that? So, I wanted to make sure that I shout out all the current Eleanors in the room. And I think I'm gonna mess this up, but I went off your guys' website. So whoever didn't update the website. <laughs> Eleanor saved my life, I mean, I, she doesn't even know the effect she had. I just found out her last name from this table over here. And I'm gonna reach out to her and say, hey, Eleanor, you don't even know what you did. Because uh, as the great Tupac once said, he may not be the one to change the world, but he's gonna spark the mind that does change the world. And that day, Eleanor, she gave me a spark of hope. And she made me believe that I was capable of things. And then I got my peer advisor, Maria, that walked me through the whole process and checked everything out for me and made sure I was on track, just like many of you have today. And with that being said, um, when you have your Eleanor, and many of you do have your version of Eleanor, but their names might be something like Edwin, or Alex, or Steven, or Emily, or Lydia, yeah, clap for them, Sandra, Juanita, Kiri, Joanna, Joe, it could be Stacy, Lillian, Randy, Gabriel, Jeremiah, Nancy, and Genevieve. Genevieve. Yes, you weren't on the website, but I remember you. Those are your Eleanors. Now, as many of you know, these are selfless individuals, right? They do this for the love of, of, of your success. So you can't really give them anything back because they're pretty much set in where they are. But you know what they want from all of us? And I know this to be true from Eleanor. They want us to pay it forward. They want you to take all the gifts and assistance and guidance and, and everything that you've received here to have success and pass it on to the next individual. Can I get an amen? So when we are in a position to assist, we must assist. When we're in a position to serve, we must serve. And when we're in a position to provide guidance, we must guide. And through all of us, the spirit of what EOPS represents will live on through all of us. Thank you for allowing me to serve today. So I have one last homework assignment for you. Remember the handouts? You guys got the handouts there? I want you to look at the side that says the golden circle. Now the golden circle has three circles. The outer circle is the what, then there's the how, and in the middle, the target is the why. All of you graduates, I want you to take that golden circle. 
Think about what it is you want to do with your life after handcuff. Then think about how you're going to get it done. But most importantly, and you cannot skip this, you better fill in the why. Because if you don't know why you're doing something, if you don't have a strong purpose, when struggle comes, right, we will succumb to that struggle, the obstacles. But when you have a strong why, like why am I here today, right, to live on and pass on the spirit of Eleanor, you cannot be stopped. You cannot be stopped. And that's where we become unstoppable. In order to get that mindset to be unstoppable, I'd like you to flip the paper to the other side. And what you have there is Greg Delano's code. And that's a list of affirmations. It's things we need to say to ourselves on a regular basis. When I was growing up, when I was many of your age, you know, the 21 to 25 year old age, I didn't believe in this self-talk, this self-affirmation until I started to meet successful people in the world. And all of them believed in that. And I started to like figure out like, hey, it looks like all these successful people say really positive things about themselves all the time. Maybe I should join in, huh? So if that's of any abuse to you, please put it by your mirror, put it on your table. I make my kids in my classroom, Sierra Pacific High School, Golden Bears, I make them read it all the time, right? And together, hopefully, we can all fill this world with Eleanor's. Thank you very much.